Today we're going to be looking at an open source alternative to 11 Labs, which is pretty incredible. You can clone your voice. Listen to this. Every day I carry her name like a shield, and every night I wonder what I'm defending. Every day I carry her name like a shield, and every night I wonder what I'm defending. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north. What you heard was the comparison of Chatterbox output to 11 Labs when a reference audio is provided. And as you can see, the model is pretty expressive and it's also uncensored. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set this model on a free Google Colab. But if you just want to test the model out, it's available on Hugging Face. There is a free Chatterbox space that you can run. So here's an example. Here's a reference audio. That place in the distance, it's huge and dedicated to Lady Shah. It can only mean one thing. I have a hidden place close to the cloister where night orchids bloom. Okay, there are a couple of settings which we're going to look and these settings are going to impact the quality of output. But let's say this is my reference audio and here is the audio that I want to generate in that voice. So I'm going to just regenerate this, which will show you the speed of generation on a free zero GPU on Hugging Face. If you're running this on Google Colab, it's going to be much faster. And I'll show you examples of how you can generate that. Okay, so the audio is generated. Let's listen to this. Now let's make my mum's favorite. So three Mars bars into the pan. Then we add the tuna and just stir for a bit. Just let the chocolate and fish infuse. A sprinkle of olive oil and some tomato ketchup. Now smell that. Oh boy, this is going to be incredible. You can see the breathing that was generated and it sounds really natural. And I think it did a really good job at reproducing the actual tone of the voice. If you want to look at some other examples, this page has quite a few examples of the reference audio and the clone audio. So later in the video, I'll show you how you can reproduce some of these things. Before that, some technical key details. So this is supposed to be zero shot state of the art text to speech system, which is built on top of 0.5B Llama model. And that's why you can run this on six to seven gigabytes of VRAM. And then you have unique control on exaggeration and intensity. I'll show you some examples of what exactly this looks like and ultra stable with alignment informed inference i'm not sure what exactly this means it was trained on almost half a million hours of clean data now the key thing to keep in mind is that it's watermarked so you can actually track whether an audio is generated by an ai or not which i think is pretty critical especially uh, the type of applications that it can enable and they also have this a small study which shows on their uh, results, people tend to like a chatterbox output more compared to 11 labs. But let me walk you through a setup of how you can run this on a free Google Colab. The first thing that you need to do is just make sure that you select T4 GPU. I believe you can still run this on a local CPU as well but the speed of generation is going to be pretty slow. Now, in order to make this work on Google Colab, you need to uninstall Transformers, Torch, or Vision NumPy because there is some conflict on the package numbers that are available in Google Colab versus the one that Chatterbox text-to-speech system tries to install. So first we're going to just uninstall everything and then we're going to install Chatterbox text-to-speech system. I think you can also run this on a MacBook with the new M series unified GPUs. If you are interested, let me know. I'll create a separate video on that. I'm creating this in a Google Colab notebook because everybody is going to have access to it. So first we need to import the libraries. Then we want to make sure that we load the model on our NVIDIA GPU. So this has a T4 GPU. And right now the system VRAM or the, the GPU RAM is pretty consistent. We are downloading the model, so the system RAM usage goes up a little bit. 
Okay, so the model is fully loaded and right now we are using about 7.5 gigabytes of VRAM on this machine. So first we're going to try one of the examples. I have ran some of these before, but we're going to redo the generation. Now, it doesn't really have any impact on VRAM at all at the moment. It went from 7.5 to 7.6. Here's the text input. Then we pass this on to the model. It will generate an audio file for us. And you can store this audio. So if we look here, we're going to see that the audio is stored here. And then we can just play the audio here. So here is the output for this prompt. Ezreal and Jinx teamed up with Ahri, Yasuo, and Timo to take down the enemy's nexus in an epic late-game pentakill. Okay, so pretty good. It sounds more like Sam Altman. Let me replay this. Ezreal and Jinx teamed up with Ahri, Yasuo, and Timo to take down the enemy's nexus in an epic late-game pentakill. Okay, maybe not. You cannot change the default voice, but you can provide your own voice reference, and then it will be able to reproduce audio segments based on your voice. But there are two things that you can control. One is this exaggeration setting, and it actually is really fun to play with. And the second one is CFG weights. That basically determines the pace or speed at which the voice is generated, the actual pace of narration. By default, both of them are set to 0.5. So we're going to start with that, and then I'll show you the impact of changing exaggeration. And you can get some really funny results. All right, so we're going to start with the default settings. Uh, now, one other thing is that the, using caps can actually change how the words are pronounced. So you probably want to play around with this. So for example, this is an audio output with the default settings. Wow, you won't believe what happened today. It was absolutely eye incredible. I was walking down the street, just minding my own business. And then suddenly, bam, it appeared right in front of me. I almost fainted. Okay, so not bad at all, right? And you can see for these smaller segments, the GPU VM usage hasn't really changed much. Okay, let's actually take it all the way to two. And I think we're going to see some really interesting outputs. Again, this is the real-time speed of generation, which is pretty good given that you're running this model locally. On a 3040 or 1490, you probably are going to get even faster results. Okay, so here's the output. Wow! You won't believe what happened today! It was absolutely eye incredible! I was walking down the street, just minding my own business, and then suddenly, BAM! It appeared right in front of me! I almost fainted! Okay, so that, that was actually pretty fun. Now, you probably don't want to keep that exaggeration too high. Also, if we just spell this right, I'm going to bring it down to something like 1.5. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's the output. Wow! You won't believe what happened today! It was absolutely incredible! I was walking down the street, just minding my own business, and then suddenly, BAM! It appeared right in front of me! I almost fainted! Okay, so, so much better. Now, there's a relationship between exaggeration and CFG weights. So they say for expressive and dramatic speech, try lower CFG weight value around 0.3 and increase exaggeration to around 0.7. Higher exaggeration tends to speed up speech. Reducing CFG weight helps compensate with lower, more deliberate pacing. Okay, so let's try it with point two. Okay, so here's the output. Wow! You won't believe what happened today. It was absolutely incredible. I was walking down the street, just minding my own business, and then suddenly, bam! It appeared right in front of me. I almost faded. Okay, so n not much difference, but I think if you keep this too high, we might see some differences. The good thing is that the GPU RAM usage hasn't changed much at all. Okay, so in this notebook, there are a few other examples that I generated. For example, this is more of a customer service scenario. And I'll highly recommend to play with some of these settings. But let me show you how you can clone your own voice. And it's that simple. All you need to do is just provide a reference audio. I recorded, I think, around 15 seconds, but probably you can work with 5 to 10 seconds. That should be more than enough to reproduce your voice. So I just provided this voice segment. And the way you add this to a prompt is like this. So here, I uploaded my audio. And then 
you just need to provide the audio path of that file. Okay, so let's just regenerate this in supposedly my own voice. Let's see what happens. Now, even if you're using a reference audio, the GPU VRAM usage does not seem to change much. Okay, so let's see. Wow, you won't believe what happened today. It was absolutely INC credible. I was walking down the street, just minding my own business, and then suddenly, bam, it appeared right in front of me. I almost fainted. Okay, so I think it did mistakenly pronounce incredible again because of probably the caps, but the quality of output seems reasonable. Also, it will depend on whether you have background noise or not. In this case, I think I did have some background noise, but I think it's not bad at all. Now, the other settings like exaggeration and CFG weights will still work even if you're bringing your own audio. So here is an example. I kept the exaggeration to 1.5 and CFG to 0.5. Now, in this case, it does seem to be taking a little longer and the GPU VRAM usage also went up a tidbit, not too high. Please remain calm. There is no need for alarm. We had the situation under control. Our team is working diligently to resolve the issue as quickly and efficiently as possible. Your cooperation is appreciated during this time. Okay, that was definitely exaggerated, right? But you want to just play around with these hyperparameters to figure out what is going to be the best case for your specific needs. Okay, so these were some quick tests. And actually, it's really great to see the progress that the open source community is making. So I think we have made a really good progress when it comes to LLMs. The text-to-speech systems were lagging behind a bit, but now if you look at a model like this, we are definitely catching up. Anyways, let me know if you want me to create more content around text-to-speech systems, especially if you're interested in running Chatterbox or something like this on a Mac OS or on a Windows machine. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.